What questions do you need to be prepared for when you go for that project engineer interview? What questions do you think they're going to have for you? Are you ready to have those uh, answers ready? In this video, we're going to talk about several uh, questions that you can expect to have in your project engineer interview and possibly some of the answers that you should have. Let's get started. Yeah. In this video, I'm going to give you nine types of questions that you can expect to have in your project engineer uh, interview. These are questions and then possibly some of the answers that you can give and why they ask these questions. If you know why, you'll probably come up with a better answer for that interviewer. So what is the, probably the first question that you can expect from a project engineer interview? One of those questions could be, how do you ensure consistency and accuracy throughout the entire project? So why would they ask this type of question? Why, why would they ask, how are you going to provide consistency and accuracy throughout the project? Well, they want to know you have good management skills, good people skills. How are you going to work with that design team to ensure that the project will be completed consistently with complete accuracy all the way through. Now, you may use a checklist, you may use different types of software, but whatever you do, they want to know about it to know that you understand your management skills. Why is that important? Well, the better your management skills are, the more effective that design team could be. So what is the interviewer listening for when you're giving your answer? One, he wants to know that you have strong record keeping skills. Two, he wants to know that you have good management skills. So with those two things together, he knows that you would make a very good project engineer for his design team. Another question that you can expect uh, to hear during an interview is that the interviewer may say, what uh, project management software or tools do you use in order to ensure uh, a timeline for a project. Now, your answer to this would be what experience you have, what uh, management software or what management tools have you used in the past in order to, to control a project to make sure that it is completed on time and on budget. You may have used things like Trello, Asane, maybe ClickUp, maybe Monday.com, or various others like Proformas, uh, even uh, Microsoft projects, uh, all this different type of software that you could possibly have used in the past and what was good about them and what worked well with your design teams or the design teams that you worked on in the past, but not as in a project engineer role. The more capable, uh, capable of you answering that question, the more confidence the interviewer has in your ability to manage a project. Now, another type of question may be, is that the interviewer may say, tell me about a project that just didn't go so well, that a, maybe it failed, actually. What did you do in order to learn from that project? Or what did you do to correct the failure and still have a fairly successful project in the end? Why would he ask that kind of question? I mean, mostly we want to tout ourselves on how great we are and impress our interviewer and said he thinks we're the best thing ever. Why would you ask though, a question that asked me about my failures? Well, we actually learn more from failures than we sometimes do from successes. So they want to know what failures have you had and how did you learn from that so that you don't repeat it again. Um, sometimes the interviewer may have had several project engineers in the, fa in the past who have failed again and again and never learned from their mistakes. So they really want to know that they have found somebody that has learned from their mistakes, that they are getting better and better as project engineers. So that is one of the main reasons that they would ask that type of question. So we have an answer already prepared for that type of a question that you're prepared to tell them, well, I learned that this particular skill I was lacking at. And so I went out 
and gained more knowledge. I improved that skill. And then when it happened again, I knew exactly what to do and corrected it before my project was a failure. And in fact, I turned that project around and became a success at it. And that's the kind of answers that they want to hear. So that's another type of question. What we do in engineering is very, very technical. Uh, even the terms that we use, uh, only those within our industry uh, know those terms. And outside of that, well, they don't. So uh, sometimes your wife may say, man, stop talking engineering. Come on, talk to my, <laughs> my language. So they may ask you a question like, uh, how have you communicated with stakeholders or with other people, let's say in government, about a project? How did you uh, change your terms in order for them to understand uh, what is going on with that project? So again, you need to have an answer prepared to answer that type of question. Well, um, without talking down to somebody, I actually learned to use uh, more common terms, a client no, or a stakeholder no, or a government official or a public um, uh, speech, how our project is doing, how well we are doing with our project, or what we overcame by doing that project. So those are terms that we, we shift from the engineering jargon and move more to a general terms and how we use those terms to say the exact same thing, <laughs> but for more people to understand what it is that we do. What is the interviewer listening for when he asks that kind of question? Well, he wants to know that you have a skills to simplify it in such a way that everyone can understand how to do the exact same thing, or at least understand the steps that were taken in order to get the end result. So that's our job as engineers, is to not only understand the technical parts, but also be able to explain it to a government official or to stakeholders. Another question that you may hear is, what uh, techniques or strategies do you use in order to ensure the accuracy of your work, that you're consistently bringing out the same workload that is exactly the same standard. Now, that may sound like a similar question earlier, but actually what they're asking is, what are you doing? How do you check, let's say you're doing uh, plans, uh, let's say a traffic sheet, and that you want to uh, send out this sheet to where it gets very few comments from an agency, that they look through it and say, yep, everything looks good, maybe make one or two changes, but overall it looks good get it on through. Well, you may say, well, I use checklists and I'm always improving my checklist. Every time the agency changes its notes or it, it changes what its requirements are, its standards, I change, my uh, I, I change my checklist to make sure that it uh, is the most up-to-date as possible. Even like general notes in a design set, they change constantly within the agencies. So you always have to check to make sure that you have the most current general notes. Well, that can be in a checklist to make sure of that. There's other ways you can also ensure, let's say that um, when you're writing down tasks that needs to be done, you're using different type of software to make sure that task is completed and that you can move on to the next task. Uh, just writing on a piece of paper or a sticky note, you may lose. And so it's better that you put it on a piece of software like Google uh, Notes or something like that, that doesn't get lost. And you can easily check to make sure it's done. Uh, type of question is, do uh, you prefer to make uh, quickly or do you take some time before you make your final decision? Now, the answer is obvious, okay? <laughs> but why would they ask that question, right? Well, there are individuals that, um, as or even as managers, what have you, they they hear a problem and they quickly come in and, and they slam in that decision and get going, you know, and get everybody going again. And at half the time, the problem just gets worse because they don't understand all the facts and what's causing the problem. As an engineer, our job is very simple, is to make sure we understand all the contributing factors to the design. We have to hear everything from different sources. Now, just not the technical part, but what does the uh, client want? What he may want is not necessarily the best technical design, but something that gets done quicker for him 
or will cost less for him to build or will um, meet his st- his own stakeholders uh, quali- uh, st- standards. So there's a lot of things you have to listen to first before you make a decision on what path you're going to go to. Even within your own design team, they may tell you, we don't have the software in order to do a turning analysis on a, a traffic uh, such as a... Um, such as a semi truck, what's the turning radius on a semi truck within a parking lot? They may not have the proper resources for that. So you, as an engineer, needs to know where you can go to get that information so you can give it to your design team. Um, also, to train them on where to get that information, it's out there, it's available. So that's your job is to take the time to listen and then make a decision, but to do it in a timely fashion. So. What they're, why they ask that question, even though the answer is obvious, they want to know that you are thinking through the process, that you're thinking through the answer to that question. You're going to show that to them by the way you answer the question. If you um, answer the question before they even finish it, well, you already kind of told them that you make decisions before you get all the facts. So you want to listen uh, as they're asking the question and then give your answer. In your experience, helps to develop a good team, a good design team. Well, that's kind of a management question. It's the people skills question. It's asking you what uh, managerial uh, techniques that you use in order to ensure that your team is happy, that your team is satisfied, that your team is, um, is supportive of their leader, that your team wants to do more work, that your team is willing to work extra hours in order to get that job out on time, on schedule. So they want to know that you understand ma- managerial skills. As a project engineer, even though you're not the project manager, As a project engineer, you're still managing a design team. You're at the entry level of that. And so you need to have some skills developed. Otherwise, you're just an engineer on the design team. And so uh, all you're doing is handling technical issues. And you're not handling the the people problems. So what makes a good design team? Well, there's a lot of factors in that. And being able to answer that question is really, really important to that interviewer because he's going to be putting you on his design team, leading that team where he is moving on to other things. So it's very, very important to that interviewer that he knows that you can handle the simple managerial skills of a design team. You may get is, okay, look at your most recent project that you've done as an engineer. What did you do in order to, uh, to maintain safety on that project and also the budget of the project? Okay, well, a lot of things that we do in design work as engineers, there's not much of a safety issue while we're doing the design. But of course, once the project is built or while it's being built, it is a safety concern. And so also anything that increases the amount of safety can also be a more expensive project to build. But other times you can do a very simple safety design that doesn't cost very much to the budget. So why is this important as an interviewer asking his uh, possible prospect project engineer? He wants to know that you know how to make designs that are safe to the public. Now, of course, as a PE, a professional engineer for your state, that's what it means, that you are guarding the safety of the state, that the state trusts you to make designs that are safe and meets the standards and codes of the... uh, of the regulations within that state. But even in a company, they need to ensure that you know how to do a design that will maintain safety at the same time, budgets. So what do you control budgets on a design team? Don't over-design. So don't over-design. Over-designing a project means you take a lot of time designing it. Um, You meticulously look for every little error that you can possibly find. And um, also you try to apply, you, you apply different uh, design options and just keep over designing and designing and designing and eventually get to a point where you just don't design. And then you look down your timesheet and you spent all kinds of crazy hours and blew the budget. Okay, so that's what we try not to do in uh, designing. 
the more experience you have and the, and the more knowledge you have of your field, well, it makes design a whole lot easier and you get to the, uh, the end result pretty quickly, hence saving your budget. Before I uh, get to the ninth uh, type of questions you might uh, be getting in an interview, please go down below right there and subscribe to our channel. You'll get to see more videos that we do. Also, you'll be notified every time we bring up a new video. So please go down below and subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to hit that like button because that's telling us we're doing a good job. The ninth type of question that you probably would receive in an interview typically for a project engineer is what technology have you used in the past to help you do uh, designs even better? This is a question you should be prepared for. Most engineering companies have pretty much the set technology that they're using, but they're always looking for other technology that will make them work faster, uh, get more done quicker, uh, it, other type of uh, technology that is easier to work with than what they're currently using. Now, of course, one of the standard softwares that we use in civil engineering is uh, Autodesk uh, AutoCAD Civil 3D. You can use Civil 3D in a 2D uh, environment, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's really meant for. Civil 3D is meant to be designed in 3D. And if you use the software correctly, it does, in fact, speed up the process in, in, uh, in drawing your designs such as doing profiles or doing pipes or doing grading, all those different things, it'll make it go by a lot quicker. If you stick with the 2D, well, it's going to take you twice, if not three times longer to do it than if you use what the software was designed to do. Other technology that you might want to use is in surveying. Uh, for years, we used the autolites. Eventually, we got to uh, EDMs, uh, electronic distance measurements. I'm talking 20, 30 years ago. And then we started getting into what we call total stations. Uh, total stations were a milestone to us. We went from five-man crews down to three, maybe two-man crews. And then recently, we've gotten into what's called GPS. Uh, GPS is, of course, global positioning satellites. And that a system allows you to work with one person on a team in surveying. It even works so well that you can stake with it. Now, of course, if you have allowable tolerances. The most current technology in, uh, in surveying is drones, actually. They're very, very good in uh, using LIDAR and be able to tell within a few inches exactly the surface elevations and locations. So that's what the technology is moving to, is drone technology. And uh, you'll be seeing more and more of that as uh, time goes by and the, and the uh, software and the technology improves. Other uh, uh, fields do just the same thing. Mechanical engineering, you can see that they're moving more towards the CAD software and actually doing 3D printing. Uh, electrical engineering has their uh, advances in their um, uh, area of expertise. Every discipline of engineering has been affected uh, by the software that's coming out now, and all of it's allowing us to do more work with fewer people. So that's the type of question that you can expect in your interview is what technology you're using, because they're kind of curious what's out there and seeing if their technology is up to date. Maybe they need to uh, improve also. So those are the nine type of questions that you can expect to see on your interview as a project engineer or even as a project manager in the engineering profession. So until the next time when we come back and give you another video on uh, engineering and on project management, keep on growing your experiences as an engineer and keep on improving your skills as a manager in the industry of engineering. See you on the next video.